Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this hard Sudoku using an XY wing. I'll also show you how to find the key strategy you need to set up that XY wing. Click below if you want to give this Friday featured setter puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you look at, you got this five and this five in the columns. You have these two fives in the row. Whenever you have four of a candidate looking into a block, you know there's only one possibility remains. So we know we can put a five right there. And now with these two sixes in columns one and three, in this six cutting across row six, there's only one place for six in block four. So we can mark that. And you want to do these easy solves in hidden and naked singles starting off before you start looking for like that X, Y wing. But we're going to get there. Let's check out these sevens. I got two sevens here in columns eight and nine. I have a seven in row one. The only place left for a seven is right here. So we can mark that. And then if we look at the seven coming down the column, and this seven coming across the row, there's only one place for a seven in block four. Nice. And now with the seven we just created and this seven again in column three, and this seven cutting across row eight, we can solve for seven right here. Nice. And so now you have this four cutting across and this four coming down. It only leaves one place left for a four in block seven. Okay, let's move on to the eights. What can we do with the eights? Well, you have this eight coming down column seven. If this eight going up column nine, the only place left for an eight in block six is right there. And then when this eight is cutting across here, in row five, it leaves only two possibilities for an eight in block four. And this is what I just did is called Snyder notation. So anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate, you mark them. And so if you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other one right away. There's another reason why we do this. And it's because since these eights are in the same row, and they have to be in block four, eights cannot be anywhere else along row four, because if you put an eight here or here, then you'd have no place to put an eight in block four. So this is called a pointing pair. And remember the name of the puzzle, squadron pointers. I think pointing pairs have something to do with it. And where it helps us is now that you can't have an eight here and you can't have it here because of this eight and because of the eight in row five, you can't have an eight there. So there's only two possibilities for eight here in block five and now if you see how this eight comes down column five and this eight cuts across only two possibilities for eight in block eight and they're also a pointing pair and eight can no longer be in this spot i'm not going to mark these three cells because with snyder notation you only want to mark two but we know that the eights are limited now to row eight here in block seven all right let's look at the nines all right we got a nine right here Cutting across the row four, a nine cutting across row five, and then you have these two nines in the columns. So, like I said, with the fives, there's only one place left for a nine in block five. And then, what these nines are doing, something very important here. We're going to get to the first critical pointing pair that we need to find. See how that nine cuts across row one? This nine comes up. The nines are now limited in two spots here in block three. And they're a pointing pair. They're in the same column and they're restricted to the block. That means a nine cannot be anywhere else along column nine. Rockrat told me that he likes to name his puzzles either after the grid aesthetics or the mechanism of the constraints. It said a different puzzle, pairs on a plane to highlight pointing pairs. And he actually said it while he was on an airplane flight on a cocktail napkin. But I think squadron pointers also refers to pointing pairs, but let's see how these nines really help us. All right, we've got these nines here. You might notice is in this block, you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you have this two looking at these cells. So you have six different candidates looking at these two cells. There's only three possibilities remaining, a one, three, or a four. If you have a three right here, that's a one or a four. Not a big deal until you look at this cell. Okay, in this cell, what can it be? Well, it can't be a two because of this two. And it can't be a five, six, seven 
eight, and now it can't be a nine because of the pointing pair of nines. So it's also restricted to a one, three, or a four. This is huge because what you have here is a naked triple. The one, three, and four are the only three possibilities in column nine in those three cells. So that's the only place we can put one, three, or four. We can eliminate a one, three, and four from these cells. And so what it puts in this cell, since you already have this five right here, is a six, nine. This cell, since it has a five, six right there, would be a five, nine. And then this cell, because the nines are a pointing pair, can't be a nine, this has to only be a five or a six. We just created a bunch of BVCs, by value cells. And that's what we need to start creating that X, Y wing, because it's made up of three cells that are by value cells or BVCs. This is the one that is of interest to us, all right? So I'm gonna mark that because we're gonna come back to it. And now let's look at the, the two. You get this two coming down here. There's only two possibilities for two in block six. So they're a pointing pair of twos. Not related to the X, Y wing, but it's gonna be important for solving the remainder of the puzzle. Subscribe to more hobbies if you like to solve pointing pairs. There's only gonna be two possibilities for two right there. And now we wanna look at another critical pointing pair. Check out this one. The one's cutting across row eight. There's only two possibilities for the one here in block seven. And since there's two possibilities and they're in the same column, this is another pointing pair. And this one, this quadrant pointer, as I call it, is just as important as these nines because it's gonna eliminate some candidates up here in block one. In particular, you look at this cell, what can it be? Well, it can't be a one anymore because of the pointing pair. Can't be a two, can't be a four, six, seven, eight, or nine. This has to be a three or a five. Okay, three or a five. We're gonna mark that because that's another BVC. You'll notice it shares a five with this cell. Okay, so we need a third cell. X, Y wings have three by value cells. So we gotta figure out a third cell that goes with this situation. You look right here in row three, column two, what are the possibilities? Well, it can't be a one because the pointing pair. Can't be a two, can't be a four, six, seven, or an eight. This can be a three, five, nine. Now what's interesting is that these three cells actually create an X, Y, Z wing, but that's not what we need to solve this puzzle. We need something a little bit stronger. And so in order to find out what we do need, we gotta look at the candidate fives. Where can the fives be? All right, I'm gonna mark all those spots where fives are a possibility. Whoops. Okay, fives can be there, they can be there, and they can be here. And I'm gonna mark those in blue. I'm keeping my orange for our two cells that we already saw before. You might notice, if you look in row one, the fives are limited to exactly two cells, right? Right here, here, columns two and eight. That's a conjugate pair. What it means is either a five's right here. If it's not here, it has to be here. So they're complementary, right? One of those has to contain a five in row one. You look down in row nine, you might notice there's only two possibilities for a five. It's in the same two columns, columns two and eight. And so if we had a five here, then this cell cannot be a five. That cell would have to be a five, right? So a five would have to be there and there. If that's not a five, this cell has to be a five. This can't be, and this cell would be a five. So you have a five there and there. Those are the only two possibilities for a five in these rows. It's either here and here, or here and here. This is a Sudoku X-wing, and this is huge. Is what we need to make some progress and get where we need to go with the X, Y wing. Because what it does is it'll eliminate all of the fives in the columns that are not in these four cells, right? Because you can't put a five here. If you put a five here, you knock out these two spots. And then the only place to put a five in row one and nine would be in the same column. You can't have that. So we can eliminate the five from right there. Check out this tutorial to learn more about Sudoku X wings. So in addition to eliminating the fives there, I'm gonna mark 
that the fire is going to live in these two spots here in block one. I can get rid of that color. We're going to limit it to these two spots in block four, limited to these two spots here in block nine. And now we can eliminate a five from that cell. And so the fives are limited to those two spots in block seven. And this is a great puzzle pack. This is one of the harder puzzles in the Space Classics pack. Join the Smarty Party if you want to solve more puzzle packs by Rock Rat Zero. Just click on the pinned comment below. What does this do for us? Well, now it allows us to have another BVC right here. And I'm going to eliminate all the blue. And now we can focus on this cell. And I'm just going to boot that one blue. So for an XY wing, we need the three paired possibilities. Okay, so we have a 3, 5 here. We have a 3, 9 there. We have a 5, 9 there. That's all three paired possibilities of the digits 3, 5, and 9. One of those cells has to see the other two. So this 3, 9 sees the 3, 5 and the 5, 9. This is called our pivot, and these are our pinchers. And to see the power of this, if you put a 3 right here, this cell would have to be a 5. If you put a 9 right here, this cell would have to be a 5. No matter what we put in this cell, both of these would be, uh, either one of these has to be a 5. So we can eliminate a 5 from any cell that sees both of them. And so you can eliminate a 5 from right here, and you eliminate a 5 from right there. This is our XY wing. This is awesome stuff. Learn more about XY wings in this tutorial. But what we can do is now solve. Since there's no other place to put a five in row one, this now has to be your five. And what's interesting is that this cell is also going to be a five. So both of the pinchers are a five and that's okay. I love that. How can we now move forward in this puzzle? Well, let's see. First, we can get rid of the colors because we found the XY wing, but there's so much more to look at here. This five now means we can solve the rest of the fives in the puzzle because now that's going to be a six. That's going to be a five, displacing the Snyder two. And then the five can't be here anymore. So we can solve for a five right there. And we got all the fives in the puzzle. This six allows us to solve for the nine right up there. So where can we go from here? Let's look at this cell right there. What can it be? Well, if you see, we have a two, five, six, seven, eight in the block. We need a one, three, four, nine. Well, I see a three, four, and a nine looking at this cell. This is actually a naked single one. So we can solve that for a one, which displaces our nine or one here in the block. So we can solve that cell now for a one. And with this nine cutting across and this nine coming down, we can solve for a nine right there. And then we see with this eight cutting across, we can solve for an eight right here and a two right there. And so this nine is going to now allow us to solve that pivot. So that's got to be a three. Love gobbling up all of these bye-bye cells. All right. And the only cell remaining, this has to be an eight. Okay. Where can we go from here? Okay, look in here, where can a nine be? With these two nines, we can solve for a nine right there, which means we got a one, three, four. Got the four cutting across. This has to be your four. That's gonna be your three. This is the one, that's gonna be a three right there. All right, looking great. We got another full house is what I call it. We only have one candidate main. So that's gotta be a two. And now let's work our way up this puzzle a bit. So we got a two and a four here. Got my four right there, so that's got to be a four displacing that Snyder. We got a full house up here, so now that's got to be a six. Okay, and now where can a six be in this column? Right, it can't be here because of that six, it can't be here because of this six, uh, it can't be here or here because of these sixes, and it can't be here because of that six. So the only place left for a six in the column is right there. So we can solve that for a six looking good there's only two possibilities remaining in row six a two and an eight there's my two so that's a two displacing the snyder eight allows us to solve for the eight over here and then this cell is going to be a three all right and then with this three cutting across we can solve for a three right here with these two threes and this three we can solve for a three right there and now what we're looking for is 
we know this has got to be a 1, 4, or a 7. So whatever we're missing is going to be right there. So we got you know these 2s, means this has to be a 2. And with this 8, we can displace this 9 or 8, make that a 1, and make that an 8. And now we're looking for a 2 and a 4 up here. I got my 2 right there. So there's your 4. There's your 2. This has to be a 1, the only thing remaining. And then because of this 3, that's your 3, and that's going to be your 4. This 4 and this 4 makes a 4 right here. And then it looks like we have a 1 and a 9. I got my 9 right there. So here's your 9, and here's your 1. All right, another full house. What can we do to solve that? We just need a 6. Okay, and with this 6, we can solve for a 6 here, which leaves a 7 down there. Awesome. And we're looking for a 1 and 7 here. I got my 1 in the column. So there's your 1. There's your 7. Now these two 7s mean I can solve for a 7 here. This 4 means I can solve for a 4 right there. And our last digit is a 1. Try to spot the XY wing in this next video. Please also consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rock Rat Zero, for being my Friday featured center. And thank you so much for watching.